Hey, what's up, everybody? This is an open discussion with C Three Films. My name is Chris, and this is Cheryl. And today we're going to be talking about the Rings of Power Amazon Prime Television Show. So, we are going into spoiler territory here. So, if you haven't seen it, go ahead and watch on Amazon Prime, and then come back and see what we had to say about it. But without further ado, let's go ahead and just jump right into this. So. We were talking on our Twitch channel, which, by the way, you guys should to totally come and watch us on our Twitch, twitch.tv slash c3films. It'd be great to see you over there. Before we started uh, filming this segment, and we had a very interesting um, disconnect between me and Cheryl, because I've only seen one episode of this show, which, by the way, Cheryl, feel free to talk about the other episodes. It's not going to bother me um, if, you feel, if you feel like you want to. But I enjoyed the first episode, and I'll get into the reasons why in a moment. Cheryl apparently did not like the first episode. So if you had stopped at the first episode, Cheryl, I guess this would have gone and it wasn't that good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe. And uh, honestly, I didn't really start to get interested in uh, Rings of Power until like the end-ish, like the last maybe 30, 20 minutes of the second episode. Um, okay. Yeah, and the the reason why is like I get it. I get that there's a lot of you know introducing of characters and such, um, but I just felt like it was too much and like not enough was happening for me. Um, I just felt like a lack of action, a lack mm -hmm. of like like things that are making me worry about the characters like i wasn't worried about the characters i wasn't attached to the characters i was just like okay we're meeting a bunch of people and we're kind of figuring out who they are and mm -hmm. that's pretty much it and it happens for like an episode and a half and it now i'm mean, like now i've watched um three episodes and i'm on the edge of my freaking seat and i'm just oh. like when is the next episode coming up because i need to know what happened Okay, that's good to know. Maybe I'll wait until episode four comes out before I watch more. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I can see what you're saying. Like, I think for me, the reason that I like I liked it was because I think I was just happy just to be back in this world, and I I was liking seeing um, just meeting the different characters because to me, like, I was hearing the music, like when she was climbing, when Galadriel was climbing the ice mountain and the music was playing, it reminded me of those feelings of like the fellowship all together. And then you hearing the theme song that would play with it. And you know, the one, you guys all know the one that you, you associate with Lord of the Rings. And I was just like feeling that I was like, okay, the music is kind of, is like, the music is getting me. It was like, or meeting a bunch of characters and yeah while i'm not as interested in like the harfoots as i am in like what's happening with the elves the elves are like I, i'm 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 wanting to see more of the elven culture um because that's something we traditionally like we see it a little bit um in the movies but it's not about the elves so we don't spend as much time in like the elven worlds in those in those movies we spend more time in the realm of men in middle earth so like for me personally i was like excited to see um more of like the 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 elven like politics and like their interaction and also having elves as main characters so that was like one of the reasons that i was like kind of getting into it and then even just the them building up as far as where is uh where is sauron we all know that sauron is still alive and like you know he's left this mark but where is he it's been centuries like this this mystery was like good enough for me personally but i also was interested in just seeing where these characters like getting to know these new characters and getting this feeling of okay so galadriel is going to meet ariander um eventually and they're going to work together and they'll probably meet this harfoot um i forget her name eleanor something maybe but the harfoot girl that we meet like uh, that they're almost kind of like hobbits um she's going to be a part of this fellowship um eventually as well and then I don't know what Eldron is going to be doing, but Eldron, I'm curious what he, his role is going to be in all this at the end of the day. So, like, Wait, do you mean for, Elrond? Elrond. Did I call him, El, <laughs> I'll call him Eldron? Elrond. Or whatever. Like, um, who is that? <laughs> so, like, I, I was curious about, like, where everything was going to come together. And I guess because it's kind of almost kind of like how game of thrones felt for me when the first saw the first episode not saying this isn't like the same level but the fact that there's so many characters i kind of just had this expectation of there's a lot of characters we're gonna be covering a lot of storylines eventually they're gonna intersect and i was and like i'm like i'm just here for it 
So that's probably why. So I was a little bit more lenient on it than you were. Well, I mean, I, I get that. I understand that, you know, the storylines are eventually going to connect to each other. Um, can mm-hmm. you just remind me real quick where episode one ends? Episode one ends with Galadriel jumping off the boat. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I think it just, there's just, like, you haven't gotten to see the evil yet. And I think that's yeah. kind of the, maybe that's what the issue is. That mm-hmm. Because we're starting a show with all the heroes and but we don't villain. get to see the villain. There's mm-hmm. no, yeah. And I know there's a little bit going on at the beginning where, you know, Galadriel's with um, her, like, little team and they go to the north and then they fight that troll and everything. But that's, like, eh. Yeah. That's, yeah. And there's, like, I don't know. Um, I know there's, like, the vo- the whole voiceover, of course. Um, where- <laughs> I was like, <laughs> the voiceover, show up, going to be upset. <laughs> Um, no, I was like, whatever. I mean, I, I mean, it's Lord of the Rings. That's how it yeah, started. That's how the movie started. Exactly. I was like, okay, this is like an homage to the movie because they have here again, we have Galadriel doing the, um, the voiceover for the beginning of the show, same as beginning of the, uh, the movie. So I'm like, okay, fine. But I feel like the, is she the main character? I don't know, because they spend a lot of time. I think there's, like, maybe three main characters. Yeah, there's, like, three. Um, yeah. And so I don't know why we spent so much time with her at the beginning. Um, and, mm-hmm. like, you barely got to see anything about Nori, the Harfoot. Oh, um, that was her name. Okay. Yeah. And, and then there's, like, there's just... I, and I have to say, like, so far the most exciting parts of the show are not with Galadriel. Really? Yes. And like interesting. The, the other thing about it though is um like she doesn't act like Galadriel. And I get yeah. I get that it's like maybe it's because she's like a lot younger. younger now and stuff, but like I don't see any connection between the character now and the character in the future there's like and, they're completely different people and i think that's what the disconnect is for me like it's almost like they have this character and they just threw her name on it saying like oh this is her and that's supposed to hook you to her her character but i almost wish that she wasn't galadriel because then i wouldn't hate the character that's super fair because i was actually going to ask because i didn't look it up but i was like galadriel Okay, I think I know who this character is, but I didn't, like, look it up to check. But in my mind, I was like, I know exactly who this character is. We've seen her in the Lord of the Rings trilogy. We've seen her in The Hobbit, I think, even. Um, What I couldn't remember was if Elrond... Is that supposed to be Hugo Weaving's character? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, so I thought... he's nothing like Elrond either. So, yeah, and I thought that was interesting. Um, So... When I was seeing, yeah, when I see him, I was like, okay, I think this is supposed to be Hugo Weaving's character. But, like, once again, like, I was making assumptions. I didn't actually look it up. Um, but, yeah, I, I can see why that disconnect would happen. Um, because you'd want, like, these characters. I had to ask myself. But I did, I, have, I will say this. I did assume, based off of, like, the names, even though I couldn't remember the names from the regular movies, I assumed that these were the characters from the original. Um even though, like you said, they're very different. But as somebody, or if anybody is like more in tune with these characters and their personality types, I would also find it very frustrating to look at these actors portraying these characters. I, I felt that way about Agent Smith in uh, The Matrix uh, Resurrections, where they had a different actor playing Agent Smith and he felt nothing like Agent Smith. So I think that would lead a lot to someone not enjoying these characters and therefore that would translate into maybe not even enjoying the, ca- the the show because you have to care about the characters within the show to know to enjoy the show itself yeah and i i think i was just also a little confused because i didn't really expect to see these characters because i thought it would be 
so long ago that they would not have it'd be completely originals yeah yeah like i didn't think there would be any familiar characters but there's actually quite a bit and i i think that there's too many because now i feel like the time um like where like i question yeah like i question where we are in the timeline Mm. of when things are happening um because uh there's some characters that are not elves that are also in Lord of the Rings at some point. So I'm just like, uh... How long do weird. dwarves live? That's another good question. So, <laughs> God, I think I, I know what you're talking I think what I remember hearing that some dwarves were going to be in this that we've seen before, but... Yeah, hmm. but I'm, I'm sure you'll... I'm sure you... When you watch it, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, okay. But... It's, yeah, it's hard because, um, yeah, I don't think you've seen enough at, at the, uh, with the Hobbit for me to really, like, get mm-hmm. into that either. But, um, yeah, there's, a, uh, it's hard to say. I'm, I'm just confused about where we are because I, I, yeah, and I almost feel like they shouldn't have had like tried to place these i i do feel like it's possible that it was forced to place these uh mm. char- familiar characters so just so that we can you know feel like we're watching something that we know um right but like i i also it's it's like a mixture because like there's some stuff where i'm like yeah this is lord of the rings it's really awesome like we're going to these places that we're supposed to like that we've heard of that like doesn't exist anymore that you know has mm-hmm. been talked about like you know kind of like um the gray havens like we never got to see the gray havens we've only heard them talk about it yeah. um but now we get to like see it so it's kind of stuff like that like places that are familiar that we never got to see and it's very very close to the original trilogy and like um it it like makes sense like aesthetically the way it's designed and everything and then you have these weird characters like elves with short hair which is weird like there's why are they designed this way and are you you are not one of those people who are going to tell me that we can't have brown elves don't you dare don't you say it no i was just about to say i was just about to say the one thing that i do like is they threw in some diversity because that was like the one like kind of awful thing about like the original trilogy and the hobbit is that we didn't have any diversity and now we do and like it feels it feels almost kind of strange like that we get this because usually it's usually it feels normal to see diversity but Mm -hmm. in this lord of the rings in this fantasy setting yeah yeah now now it's weird but i like it i like that we're getting to see something different but i think it would have been better if the elves had long hair (laughs) <laughs> all elves must have long hair, just like all Targaryens must have white hair. <laughs> so. No, but, like, I mean, I, the reason why I say that is, like, I mean, at first I didn't really have a problem with it, but then when I think about it, like, the reason why they have long hair is because they're so old. And to have short hair, it's it just feels like an off design. And right, it would have been... Does he it, cut it? Like, why would he cut it? And if that's the case, yeah. he's the only elf that cuts his hair. But, yeah, I mean, but there's a lot of elves that have short hair, which is weird, and so it's kind of mm. like the norm, normal thing in in this series. But mm. I feel like if they had kept the original look, but with just different faces, like diff- mm. like diverse um, actors playing the elves, but the elves still having the elven look would have do been el- better. Do elves always have white hair? Um, no. Arwen okay, had okay. black hair. A black hair, she did. You're right. But and Arwen, Arwen was pure, was a purebred. Yeah, and Elrond okay. had black hair too, or brown hair. Okay, I just couldn't remember because I just and I can't remember what Legolas had. For some reason, in my mind, Legolas had white hair, but I think he had blonde. I can't remember. Yeah, was um, like, he was like super blonde. Okay, so and Galadriel, did she have white? Okay, anyway, I'm getting sorry, I'm getting, she, I'm getting she's out. She's blonde. Yeah. Okay. 
So, because I think, <laughs> by the way, bear witness, everybody, you're witnessing one of the rare moments when I am the filthy casual and Cheryl knows everything about everything. <laughs> this is this is a moment to like witness because, yes, I, <laughs> this is great because there's usually one on the other side of this when it comes to comic book stuff. And I, I'm sitting here just being like, oh, wait, well, Cheryl, if you know this, this and the other, you wouldn't like this. And Cheryl's just like, oh, OK. But so, yes, I am coming into this as someone who is definitely a casual Lord of the Rings fan. I like it a lot, but I don't know as much of the lore as others, and I'm not as tied to it. I've seen all the Hobbit movies. I've seen, like, all the Lord of the Rings films. I've seen the extended cuts. Not as often as Cheryl, apparently. But I've seen them. Um, but at the same time, when I came into this, I'm coming into it with not without as much attachment. Um Although I do know that I asked myself a similar question as you did, Cheryl, when I found out that the story was starting about Sauron. Um, I thought that that was weird. I was like, wait, how long has Sauron been alive? And I, and I remember questioning it. And I know that Elrond had a whole thing where he was fighting against Sauron, but that was within like the lifespans of, uh, certain, of like the characters within our movie anyway, not just like an elf. Um, like I think some of our characters might have been children when Elrond, when Elrond had like, and the the king uh, dealt with Sauron. So that was a little strange. And I know that. And then I was also just asking, timeline wise, because they start mentioning how their one true king will appear one day, and I'm like, okay, that king, that king is Aragorn, but that I like I didn't realize he had been missing for that long, or you know, like his parentage he's not born yet so how does this kind of exist like that that i will say like those moments did get me to start asking more questions rather than just flowing into the lore and being like oh this is expanding upon it so i i did have those questions as well yeah i mean i'm not gonna lie i am getting a little bit confused watching this show but i have a mm -hmm. feeling it's gonna end like the series i i heard that this series is already committed to five seasons oh wow they are they i mean yeah. I, all right i guess they're they're confident good. yeah good luck <laughs> um but i believe it and i i have a feeling that one of the uh, at least maybe in the last season it's gonna end with that part with um, Hugo Weaving telling Isildur to put the drop the ring into into the uh, into Mount Doom and yeah, I feel like that's where it's gonna end um, because okay. it would be weird if it didn't because ultimately I think that's gonna be I think that's the evil that's approaching. Okay. It's interesting, too, because now that I have the confirmation of who Galadriel is, um, I'm wondering, do you feel like... Because we've seen it with Star Wars, and it's been effective, um, but it's been effective for a different reason. So my question to you is, do you feel like having Galadriel as the main character, when we know what... And Elrond is another one of the main characters. Like These are two of our main characters right off the bat. Do you feel like having them as main characters when we know what their futures are dilutes the um di the anticipation not the word but dil dilutes the tension of of the show and the characters when they get put into harrowing situations i don't because they have other characters that we're worried about like nori and the other elf mm -hmm. um the brown elf ariande i think is his name yeah um mm -hmm. and then like you're you there's other characters too, like that we're gonna meet that we know won't die yet. Mm -hmm. um, but there's other characters around them that make me wonder, like, okay, how are they gonna connect? Like, I know who they are um, mm -hmm. because I'm, I guess, a little bit more familiar with the the lore um, of like. I don't want to ruin it too much, but... It's fine. Go but I'm like, it. will you even know what I'm talking about? Probably um, not, <laughs> we're being honest. <laughs> um, but there's this part where, like, we get to meet the Dunedain, and uh, you have no idea who they are, but, um, but that's okay. You'll figure it out um, just from one character. Uh, but, okay. there, but there is... Um, 
a character that they call uh, Elendil, and that's something that Legolas calls Aragorn in the movies. Interesting. Okay. So that would have gone over my head. Yeah, and also, and and you, I, I mean, this is also uh, a known thing from the original uh, movies that um, Aragorn is um, a Duna Dine. So, <laughs> mm. so we get to see his origins. Oh, interesting. So then. So then this this show isn't like centuries before the Lord of the Rings. That's what I'm trying to figure out cuz I'm like here we have Galadriel and Elrond look super young. Yeah. But then like it's not that far off from where like we started the original trilogy. Maybe, so yeah. I'm just trying to figure it out and like it's it's really confusing, but in the meantime I'm enjoying what's happening in the in the story. Okay, because, yeah, you said that for you, the story picks up in, like, the last, like, little bit of episode two, and then episode three, it kind of keeps the momentum going. Oh, episode three is, like, the best episode. <laughs> There's some, okay. like, action scenes and stuff like that. Oh, they're really cool. So I'll be excited to see that. Even when we saw Galadriel fight briefly with her sword, I remember thinking to myself... I love watching elves fight because elves are always awesome whenever they fight. Like, Legolas was one of the coolest things to watch. Even though Aragorn is my favorite character, like, Legolas is always, like, the one that's the most fun to watch on screen because of what, what he's going to do. Um, so I was, I was, I have to say, though, like, one thing I wanted to talk about, because um, we spent a lot of time talking about lore and story, um, but one thing I wanted to talk about for this this series is that I was kind of impressed with the budget that they put behind it. Now, it is Amazon Prime, uh, so they probably have a lot more money than Netflix, but uh, it, still, it still really impressed me because there were, I will say there were times when I forgot I was watching a television show and not a movie. And that doesn't always happen when I'm watching Netflix shows. Netflix shows or even, even if you guys have been paying attention, certain Disney Plus shows, even when they're Star Wars, still feel like a television show but this one um did not so it's kind of impressive that amazon prime is putting like their full backing uh behind this show and like but the creature effects look really good the locations look really good i was remember, I remember asking myself how are you gonna do a fantasy series like this which is hot like heavy fantasy um like your locations aren't always like sometimes they're like little huts in like the woods or whatever but other times there's like huge structures and golden arches and people and they, they even had they even if they were in shadow but they even had the like the tree people in this and i was like that's cool so yeah it's like really impressed me um they're called ents oh yeah that's right ents. <laughs> that's actually something they're called in other things too so i should know that <laughs> It's funny because uh, <laughs> this is a sidebar thing, but it's funny. Like, there's all these like crazy names, <laughs> mm -hmm. like uh, you know, Galadriel, Elrond, uh, Aomer, stuff like that. And then you have Treebeard. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, seriously, the production design on this show is insane it's like it, it it reminds me a lot of um game of thrones because the quality for every episode is so high and they like the just the production value is just so good and it matches with the storytelling mm -hmm. like they put a lot of work into this um and it really shows and so I think that's also one of the reasons why I like it so much. It's not just because it looks good, but because it looks good and it, like, is really entertaining to watch. Be it, like, I felt like the first episode and a half was really slow, but it got me mm -hmm. there. Like, mm -hmm. it, I, because there, it's almost like there was a promise just from what they were showing us. Like, yeah. uh, like just just watch this get through it i promise you 
that it's going to get really good soon. And then, then you'll, you'll, you know, like I, and I could see it too, because it reminded me of the first episode of Game of Thrones where I was like really bored. Actually, the first couple episodes of Mm -hmm. Game of Thrones, I was really bored because we were meeting so many people and like we were establishing everything. But um, this happened like way faster because it only, only took an episode and a half. But, um, but like, I was just acknowledging, like, okay, we have to meet all of these people. We have to. I just have to sit through it. Um, Mm -hmm. I honestly wasn't sure if we were going to like it because I was like, if it's going to be like this the whole time where we're just, like, watching people talk to each other about stuff, then Mm -hmm. I'm going to be really bored. But um, the whole time Galadriel was saying, like, there is an evil it's coming. I just want to find it. So, like, that was the promise that they were giving right. me to, like, tell me to wait. Just wait and hold on. It's coming. Mm-hmm. I think there was one part that there's a line I like in this movie. I mean, this movie, this show, in the first episode that really got me thinking, where I think it's the king and he says that the same wind that can blow out a fire can also cause the fire to spread. And I was like, ooh, that, that, that's pretty good. It's like the very act of Galadriel, like, hunting down Sauron could cause Sauron's power to, like, grow and spread and to affect other people. I was like, okay, okay, that was, that's, that's, that's pretty good, show. Like, I see you. I see what you're doing there. So I, I thought that was interesting as a concept. But, yeah, I'm, I'm probably going to uh, – I'll definitely keep watching it, and I – pretty sure this might be i'm trying to i don't know if this will be a show i watch week to week but um it sounds like even i mean amazon does this anyway they release three episodes at a time but it sounds like almost like the fact that they release three episodes kind of works within this show's favor because they it almost looks like they know that in this first episode it's not going to be enough to hook you but like you said they'll give you that promise that if you stick with them then by the time you get to the third episode you're like all right, you're on board, and now you'll be able to watch this week to week. Oh, you're definitely going to watch this week to week. <laughs> <laughs> After you get through that last episode, you're going to, oh, man, it's so good. It's, <laughs> oh, I'm gosh. so excited. I'm actually wondering why there aren't, like, more episodes right now, because it came out on the 1st, and it's already the 12th, what gives. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. Hmm. I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah, I know that we were behind um, to getting getting to this because we were off for a week. But all right. Well, uh, we'll have to get to that later. But is there anything else that you wanted to like bring up about the show before we uh, get out of here? Um. No. Not. No. No. I can't talk about it because you had to watch it first. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. All right, but oh, that's oh, all. No, I, I, sorry, what quick thing. Did you know that the guy who plays Elrond is also the guy who plays young Ned Stark? So young Elrond. Yo, that's why he looks Ned familiar Stark. to me. You're right. That is and, him. And really. Sean Bean and... Um, Hugo, Hugo Weaving. Hugo Weaving. I was like, the well, um, one character, Hugo one of those two characters has a brighter future than the other. Like, Ooh. one of those characters is really going to get ahead in oh, life. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, it's, well, I mean, <laughs> sorry, I'm just laughing because Sean Bean dies in both. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. That is true. So spoiler alert for Lord of the Rings and Game Oh, of come Thrones. on. But... <laughs> it's like over 10 years old. It's like 20 years old. <laughs> right. <laughs> 10 years for one, 20 for the other. Um, anyway, that's what we thought uh, about um, the Rings of Power. What did you guys think about it? Have you seen all three episodes up until this point? Are you like us and you're kind of wondering where the fourth episode is? Are you going to be watching it week to week? Uh, are you also confused about like the st- where the story takes place like we are? Maybe you guys can help us out in the chat and like clarify if you guys do understand where it takes place. What have you thought about it? Comment below. Let us know. And right down there, if you give us a like, share, and subscribe. Even if you don't, though, I have been Chris, and this has been Cheryl, and we'll see you all next time.